Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and today I want to talk to you about how to cast with a bait caster. Now I know when you're first starting out, it can seem really difficult and real daunting. And, and even when you've been using it for a while, it can still seem kind of a pain in the butt to try to get it dialed in and get it working correctly. So, let me show you a few tips and tricks on how to get there and how to make sure that your casts are smooth and accurate and backlash free. First off, I want to go through the different types of anti-backlash controls that come with baitcasters today. There's basically three kinds. One is the pin kind, the other is the centrifugal brake kind, and the third is the magnetic brake kind. And some baitcasters come with a combination of two of those or even all three, which can make it even seem more confusing. So let me take you through each one. The first one is the pin kind. And the reason I want to show that first is that's regardless if, if, you're, if your unit comes with just one or with all three, the pin is the first one that you want to adjust. And you can see in this one here, I've taken the side plate off, it has six different pins. And if you look closely, you'll see that this one right here is sticking further out than the rest, except for the one on the opposite side. I have two here that are out and the others are in or closest to the center of the of the reel. Now when it's closest to the center of the reel that's off and if you click it you just stick your fingernail in there and just give it a little bit of pressure you feel it pop out then it's on. When it's on it's going to give a lot more resistance to the spool. It's, it's going to help cut down on backlashes. I recommend when you're first starting out you want to have three maybe four on and always do it in crisscross patterns. Don't do one, two, three, four like that. You want one, two, three, four in crisscrossing patterns. Okay? Go with four if you're first starting out, maybe three. Then you put the plate back on. Now, those are brakes are always on. They don't adjust or change as throughout the cast. That's important to know. We'll get to that in a minute later. Now, I've been using bait casters for a long time. You can see I had two on. Sometimes people like them one, sometimes like to free spool them. Once you get to a certain point in your comfort level, you can start clicking them back and clicking, turning them off until you feel comfortable with them. And as time goes on, maybe with lighter lures, you might want to turn some more on or you might want to turn some more off. You can experiment, but it's always good to start with three or four on and then adjust from there. Next I want to show you is the centrifugal brake, which that's always this knob on the reel handle side. No matter what make model reel that you've got, it's always with the one next to the reel handle. And all that has is a little knob right here. And you turn it uh, clockwise to tighten and counterclockwise to loosen. You'll notice as you get through this, they'll the become a sweet spot where just a little bit of incremental change forward or backwards can make a big difference. And what the centrifugal brake does is it applies some brakes internally on, on the, on the uh, reel, on the spool on this side. And then again, that applies brakes all the way through the cast. And that helps again reduce the backlashing. The more you have it on, the, uh, the more brakes that you're going to have less backlash. Of course, the more you have it on, the less distance that you're going to have. And perhaps even the harder you'll need to cast. We'll get to that in just a minute. But then lastly, I want to show you the magnetic brakes. And I'm going to tell you in a minute how all this works together in harmony. I just want to show you what these are. The magnetic brake, as you'll notice, here's a centrifugal on this reel right here. The magnetic is on this side. And that's always the case, no matter what make model you have. The magnetic brake is over here. This has a gauge. Usually it's 1 through 10, usually. What the magnetic brake does is it applies braking more towards the end of the cast than at the beginning. Very useful for when you're throwing light lures or you're throwing into the wind. Works real well for that. So sometimes I'll have this dialed all the way up if I'm throwing it in wind and sometimes I have it all the way off and oftentimes I have it for all kinds of things in between. Depending on the weight of the lure I'm throwing, depending on the wind conditions and depending on the rod and the type of casting that I'm doing. This is a, what you use to fine tune your casting once you get everything done. If you notice I've shown you a progression in order that you adjust as you're setting your, your reel up. It's pins first, centrifugal next, and then your magnetic brakes. Some reels, I just missed, I forgot about a fourth type. There are some reels where there's just a knob over here, and that's both your centrifugal and magnetic. They don't make so many of those anymore, but there's still some out there. You just have one knob to adjust, and that's all there is to it. You don't have to worry about that. Same with just centrifugal. That's pretty popular as well. Just that one, you don't have to adjust anything else. Anyway, what you want to do is once you have to adjust it is set your lure up, hang it 90 degrees you know, parallel to the boat or to the ground, release the button and let it free spool. It should drop at a slow controlled rate and once it hits the floor, 
the reel shouldn't backlash. It'll, it'll spin a little bit, but not much. It shouldn't backlash. If it backlashes too much, readjust as necessary until you get it to the point where it just stops spinning right when the lure hits the, the floor. Then you know you've got it set up, at least initially, you've got it set up uh, correctly. But you know, once you have it set up, that doesn't mean that, guess what? <laughs> I've, I'm good to go, I won't have backlashes anymore. No, these, these brake mechanisms are not silver bullets. They're not going to prevent all backlashes. And as a matter of fact, a lot of issues people have with casting bait casters has nothing to do with getting it set up properly. So let's go through some of the other, other issues you can have and how to overcome those once you have your bait caster set up. Okay, so now we've got the bait caster set up right. We're ready to rock and roll. What are some of the issues you may have? Well, first of all, when you're casting, couple things to remember, the release point. When you cast, you want to let go at about the 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock position. And how you can tell whether you're releasing too soon or too late, when you cast, if the lure goes really high, comes back down, you released a bit too soon. Okay, a big huge arc is a, a good indication of letting go too soon. Conversely, if you're cast and the lure <laughs> you know, lands right in front of you or lands in a straight line really hard into the water and typically that results in a backlash, then you release too late. So pay attention to when the lure hits the water, how it hits the water, what kind of arc it has and that gives you an idea of when of your release timing and whether you need to release sooner or later. One other thing to keep in mind is that with most bass casting techniques, it's all on the wrist. It's not with the forearm and it's not with the arm. You know, we're not here to do passes. <laughs> we're not throwing touchdowns here. So don't do any of this. I don't want to see the rod way back behind you and you're throwing it. No, okay, doing that, you're going to throw it too hard and you're going to cause backlashing issues. Okay, part of the reason why you get backlashes is you're throwing way too hard. As a matter of fact, when you're first starting out, a lot of people get obsessed with their distance. Please don't do that. Please, please, please don't do that. With bass fishing particularly, it's all about accuracy, not distance. So don't worry about your distance. And then as a matter of fact, as with time goes on, as you get more and more practice, your distance will get there. It'll come, it'll come later. Don't worry about it. If you try hard right now to throw as far as you can, I guarantee you, you will get a backlash. So first off, Forget about your distance, it doesn't matter. It, what matters is technique and accuracy. As a matter of fact, a great way to do this is to practice in your backyard, set up a target and aim for it. One that's not very far away. Don't try to herk it all the way across your yard. You're going to be disappointed with the results. Focus on something within your range and focus on that accuracy. Now when you cast, again, it's, it's wrist. And you don't need to bring the rod way past, go over here behind your head, no. Because when you do that, you don't know which direction it's going to go in. It's, it's hanging back here, who knows. When you fire forward, it's going to go somewhere. Keep it right in front of you, okay? Keep the rod right in front of you. That's the best way to keep it accurate. So all it is, you might go a little bit past your shoulder, but it's just a little cast like that, okay? It's really light. It's not much. It's all in the wrist. Watch my wrist again. It's just wrist, okay? Very simple and straightforward. You don't have to throw it really hard. It's just simple wrist. And one other thing, it's a lot harder when you shake people's hands to move your wrist like this than like that. So don't cast with your wrist like that. Put it like that. See that? I've got it up and down. The real handle is up. I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you're going to have it the other way. But right-handed, your wrist, you want it the way you would when you shake someone's hands. Easier to cast that way. Okay, a lot easier to cast that way, straight up and down, versus trying to do it like this. Okay, and it, it, a little small thing, but the spool then is on its axis, and it will spin a little bit easier. It's a minor thing, especially when you have a reel that's got nine or ten bearings. It's pretty much such a minuscule improvement, it's not much, but it does give you a little bit of a performance advantage. But keeping your wrist straight up and down, using your wrist, not bringing it back and not throwing it as hard as you can. Just practice on that release point and practice with how much pressure to use on your, with your thumb on the reel. 
Initially when you're casting, you want to use quite a bit of pressure on the thumb, right on the reel, to make sure it doesn't spin really hard. And as you practice, you can start letting loose a little bit more and more. But even, if I've been doing this for 40 plus years. I can tell you, I always have my thumb at least resting on the spool when I cast. I can feel it. After a while, you can tell if you start to get a backlash, you can use your thumb to apply more pressure and prevent it from happening, okay? So that's it. It's very simple, very straightforward. Couple of things to keep in mind. Get that reel adjusted correctly and then start practicing with short targets. And I guarantee you, you will get better and better and you'll love your bait casting outfit. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com.